Nobody wants to get united. Like, what we gotta do is meet everybody in 149th Street at the bench. One of the things I struggled with the most when I very first started doing graffiti was letter name positioning. I didn't know how close to put my letters, and when I moved them closer, it seemed to always mess things up. So in today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys all about letter name positioning, one of graffiti's five fundamentals. And one of the key parts of this tutorial will be reviewing how this affects your throwies. That way you can improve those as well. If you want to learn the other four, feel free to check out the playlist that we're currently working on. It'll teach you every single one of graffiti's fundamentals. So how exactly does this fundamental work? Letter positioning is how you orient each individual letter of your name. And name positioning is going to be a result of how you oriented each one of your letters. The individual letters of our name have to come together in order to make a word. And then for them to do that, they have to be positioned within a certain range of one another. If they're positioned too far, then they're not going to make a word. Whatever letter ends up being separated is going to look detached from all of the others. With that, we understand our letters have to be, boom, within a certain range. Now what's really interesting is when you're just doing normal, ordinary print font, lowercase letters are positioned in such a way where you can draw a line down their stem and position those lines equidistant from one another, and that'll be the positioning of each one of your letters. This doesn't work for graffiti. It doesn't work at all because graffiti treats each letter, like lowercases, as uppercase letters. And all uppercase letters, even in something like print font, are positioned based on the next letter. That's why you need to consider each individual letter and position it according to its needs. Now let me explain. A normal print font positioning is perfectly fine in graffiti, but if you want to maximize flow, if you want to maximize your negative space management and other fundamentals, we like to position our letters closer together. This is really going to help out your work and put you in the best position in order to take advantage of each one of graffiti's fundamentals. Now before we go on about how letter name position can help your graffiti, I want to let you guys know we have a toil book that is a comprehensive guide to graffiti, and the book goes over everything. It teaches you each one of graffiti's fundamentals in a comprehensive way and has more information than any other how to do graffiti book out there on the market. It'll teach you how to flow, it'll teach you how to evolve your styles and even find your styles. It'll teach you all about letter name positioning and it covers a lot more information that's never been talked about in this art form. We got a link to the ebook in the description down below. So if you're looking to get out of the toy phase or just increase your skill level in general, be sure to go ahead and check that out. So let's say for example, we have a letter that's standing straight up. We can take any one of these letters and we can slide it up, slide it down, move it to the left, move it to the right, or we can rotate it however we'd like as well. Now, based on how you position each one of your letters, that's going to change the overall name's position. You see, if we just have our normal name positioned the way you typically would, our name positioning is going to just have a straight alignment. On the flip side, we can keep the name's positioning as the straight alignment, but if we lean all the letters to the left, we can now have a left-leaning name with a straight alignment. Nothing fancy there. Say we lower each letter as we go through the name, well now suddenly our name's position is going to have a downward slope, while our letter's position are still standing upright. So now you see how letter positioning can affect your name positioning. But here's the thing, based on how you position your letters, and even based on how you position your name, you're going to end up interacting with other fundamentals. Say for example, we have two different letters, and we slide one a little bit too close to the other, well now suddenly the letter structure of one of our letters gets obscured and we can't see its entire structure. This is very problematic. And this is where a lot of new graffiti artists go wrong, where they end up obscuring one of their structures, therefore destroying it. A lot of even advanced graffiti artists fall victim to this when they attempt wild styles. This runs rampant in wild styles. And the opposite effect is also true, right? If we take our letters and we separate them too much, even though they still make a word, you're going to end up diminishing your flow. Something that's a little bit more situational and is more of a case-by-case -case basis that you'll have to examine within your own work is both moving your letters too close to one another and moving them too far from one another can build a lot of weight. Let me explain. If we go ahead and we take two letters and we overlap them a lot and we're able to see a lot of these different overlaps, that area is going to look more detailed. On the other hand, if we position our last letter, for example, farther away from the name and it ends up building an excessive amount of negative space, well that's also going to build a lot of weight. So once again, this is a very much case by case thing that you'll have to keep an eye out for as you work with it. For newer graffiti artists, if you're sticking to the fundamentals and you're using your lettering chart, you shouldn't be having any issue with this. As long as your letters are on the baseline and they reach the cap line, then you're pretty much set to go. You're not really going to be having any issues. And if you do have any issues, then it'll be based based on the left to right movement of each individual letter that you're doing. This is one of those fundamentals that has a massive impact on your throwies because usually when we see new graffiti artists do a throwie, they'll have the bottom portion of their throwie extend a little bit more to the right. What ends up happening is this creates a sequence where every subsequent letter has to extend further and further to the right. That way you can see its structure. If it doesn't extend to the right, well then its structure is going to get overlapped by the letter before it. And this is where letter positioning comes into play. If you can make sure the top and the bottoms of your letters are all set centered with one another, then you're perfectly fine. You're not going to have that right side poking out too far, obscuring the next letter. This is a really
really subtle balance though. If done correctly, it'll allow you to freely move every subsequent letter to the left or to the right as you see fit. Now, as we previously hinted at, flow is really impacted by your letter positioning. The reason for that is because part of flow is line uniformity and similarity, which is proximity based. If you have two lines, they have to be close enough to one another in order to actually flow. If they're not, they don't flow. So when you're doing throwies and pieces especially, you can use letter positioning to take two similar lines and put them closer to one another, therefore increasing your flow. It's also for this reason you oftentimes don't see people with alternating positions where it leans to the left and it leans to the right and it leans to the left and it leans to the right because not only does this create a lot of pockets and valleys for your negative space, but it also diminishes flow because you're lessening the opportunities for similar lines to be positioned close to one another. Now that's not to say that this is impossible to do, it certainly is possible to do, but it's just to explain why you typically see people have a uniform lean to most of their letters in their name. Normally the best course of action is to be very modest and subtle with your positioning. Extreme changes are great for very large stylistic flares, but this also is going to have a bigger and bigger influence on the other fundamentals. Say for example, we just raised the letter very slightly, nobody may notice, but if we really move that thing up, we're going to end up building a lot of negative space below the letter, which is going to add weight to that sensor letter, and it's probably also going to disrupt flow. And as you progress, as you get better, you'll be able to manage these more dramatic outcomes. Look at somebody like Matt C, one of my favorite people to use for an example on this topic specifically, because she does a lot with letter positioning. She usually goes for the straight across name positioning, but each letter is positioned in a very creative way to maximize flow. You can see here the way she positioned her A puts the crossbar on the A in the perfect spot to have line uniformity and similarity with the D in these areas right here. Not only that, the height of the A allows it to be placed on top of the M, and that positioning allows line uniformity as well with the M itself. So all based on the letter positioning, she's able to take that one line of flow and seamlessly pass it through the entire name. In a more simple sense, what you would end up having is something a little bit more like this, where it's a combination of things, and in a very wild style sense, you'd end up having something like this, where you have a lot of overlaps, a lot of crazy interlocking letters, but these overlocking letters allow each one to transfer their line uniformity and similarity through the entire name. But dudes, that just about wraps up today's video. If you feel like you learned something, check out the book we just published. It's a comprehensive guide on graffiti teaches you everything you have to know, and all the information there is applicable to hand styles, throwies, and pieces. And that's kind of why I didn't title this book anything to do with hand styles. It's why I focused more so on titling it something around the fundamentals. Because once again, this really is the foundational information that applies to all graffiti. So if you want to check that out, I got a link to it in the description down below and catch up on the playlist if you want to learn some more right up here. With more graffiti content, right down here, and I'll catch you guys back here next week. Thanks for watching.